Hi, in this video we are going to study the principles and objectives of impression making in complete dentures. Now before we make any impression of the complete denture, we have to understand that an impression is the negative likeliness or a replica of the oral tissues and teeth present, which is going to help us in, make, in making the final prosthesis for the patient. So there are a few principles of impression making that we have to keep in mind before starting the case. All oral tissues must be healthy before making the impression. Any inflamed mucosa should not be recorded because that is going to affect the fit of your final prosthesis. Impression should include basal seat within limits. So the area that is to be covered has to be limited. We do not want any overextended impressions because that will be reflected in our final prosthesis. Therefore, impression should include only the basal seat within limits or the confines of the denture base. The borders must be in harmony with anatomical and physiological limitation, limitation of the oral structure. So the borders must be harmonized as to how much we want to extend them within the anatomical and the physiological confines of the tissues. Selective pressure technique should be used. So wherever you want to apply more pressure or in stress bearing areas, more pressure can be applied in re relief areas, relatively lesser pressure should be applied. So that fundamental uh, inherent property of each tissue should be known before making the impression and a selective pressure technique should be employed so that the tissues are preserved in their original form. Sufficient space should be provided within impression tray for impression material. So be it primary impression or final impression, there should be enough space for the material between the tray and the tissues basically to record the impression. Guiding mechanism like tissue stops and handle should be provided to uh, for correct positioning of the tray. So guiding mechanisms like tissue stops as the name suggests, it stops on the tissues. So these are specially fabricated in a custom tray so that you can orient the tray back in its position without distorting the tissues and without distorting the water molding. It is going to help you guide to come back to the same position every time you place the tray in the patient's mouth. And the handle is obviously going to help you place and remove the tray from the patient's mouth. Then impression should be removed from the mouth without damaging the mucosa. Definitely preservation of what is existing is more important than a restoration, is, a restoration of what is lost. This is known as Devan's dictum and it is a very important statement that preservation of whatever is there in the mouth is your utmost priority rather than rehabilitation. Next is materials used should be dimensionally stable. You do not want any material that distorts while placing or removing the tray or something that is going to change its property when the uh, lab technician or, or when you are going to use it for your denture fabrication. So the materials used for impression should be dimensionally stable. And lastly, the external shape of the impression should be similar to the external form of the complete denture. So the shape of the impression should be a mimic, should be just a copy or a replica of how your complete denture surface is going to be. So these are the principles of impression making in complete dentures. So what we saw were the principles of impression making and now these are the objectives of impression making which can be remembered by this mnemonic PRESS where P stands for preservation of remaining natural structures, R is for retention, E is for aesthetics, S is for stability and the other S is for support. So there are five objectives of impression making, preservation of existing structures, retention, aesthetics, stability and support which we are going to discuss in detail. Starting with the preservation of remaining natural structures. So, what does that mean? Impression should record details in appropriate form to prevent any injury to the existing tissues. Relief to non-stress bearing areas, thus prevent damage to the oral tissues. So, whichever areas are limiting areas, whichever areas are the relief areas should be provided adequate relief because they will not be able to take up stress. And avoid overextension of the denture. So, limiting areas are very important in determining the extension of the denture base. And this has to be considered so that you are going to preserve whatever is existing. You do not want to harm the existing structures at the cost of making a new prosthesis. So the first important objective of impression making is preservation of remaining natural structures. Second objective is retention. Retention is something that is the inherent quality in the prosthesis which resists the force of gravity, adhesiveness of food and forces associated with opening of the jaw. So, the prosthesis in itself should be able to resist these movements. When the patient is chewing, the prosthesis should not pop out. When the patient is yawning, it should not drop down. So, forces like gravity or if the patient is having something like sticky food like toffee 
or chewing gum then it should adhesiveness of food should not affect the movement of the denture base on the on the ridge so it has to be firmly adherent on the ridge that inherent property of the prosthesis is called retention it is the ability of the denture to withstand displacement against the path of insertion so whichever way the denture goes inside the mouth the ability of the denture to come out along the same path along the same path of insertion is called retention so if the denture goes in like this it should if it comes out also along the same path that means it is not retentive okay so retention is along the same path of placement or insertion there are numerous factors that are going to affect complete denture retention starting from anatomical factors physiological factors physical factors mechanical factors and muscular factors so what are the anatomical factors determining the retention in complete denture size of the denture bearing areas bigger the size of the area more bigger the area of uh, denture bearing tissues more will be the retention and quality of denture bearing area so if the denture bearing surface is healthy and the mucosa is firm and resilient then the retention will be superior physiological factors like saliva and its quality so a mixed consistency of saliva adequate quantity of saliva all these factors are also important in adhesion and cohesion of the denture to the tissues so saliva is a very important factor in determining the success of complete dentures physical factors like adhesion cohesion interfacial surface tension capillarity and atmospheric pressure and peripheral seal which we are going to discuss in the subsequent part of the video then we have mechanical factors like undercuts so if there are any anatomical considerations where the denture itself gets stuck in certain areas for example your maxillary anterior undercuts or bilaterally distal buccal undercuts so these undercuts have to be evaluated because these are going to help in retention yes but they will also be areas of soreness if they are not relieved adequately so undercuts are the mechanical factors which have to be assessed then you can also incorporate a few things like retentive springs magnets denture adhesives for retention of the complete denture and suction suction chambers and suction discs so these are additionally incorporated factors which can enhance the retention in complete denture and lastly we have the muscular factors that is the balance of muscles which is going to enhance retention by means of understanding neutral zone so these are the different factors affecting retention in complete dentures so looking at the physical factors that are going to affect retention first one being adhesion now if you understand the word adhesive adhesive is something that we used to stick to dissimilar surfaces for example if you have to make furniture then the wood and the veneer are stuck together with the help of an adhesive so same concept applies in complete dentures it is the physical attraction of unlike molecules so which are the unlike molecules there is adhesion between the residual ridge and saliva at the junction and between the saliva and the denture base so adhesion is seen between two dissimilar kind of materials or molecules it acts when saliva sticks to the denture base and to the mucous membrane of the basal seat so here saliva is acting as an intermediate buffer that is adhering to the mucosa as well as the denture base so this is adhesion then next is cohesion cohesion is the physical attraction of like molecules for each other so the saliva molecules which are similar to each other the forces of attraction between them are called cohesive forces it occurs within the layers of fluid usually saliva that is present between the denture base and the mucosa so if this is your residual region this is your denture then the force of attraction be between the molecules of saliva or within saliva itself are cohesive forces or related to cohesion now what is the quality of adhesion and cohesion going to depend on how is saliva such an important factor so it depends on the close adaptation of the denture to the tissues it depends on the size of denture bearing area and it depends on the type of saliva so type of saliva is very important in determining the success of complete dentures then the next property is interfacial surface tension interfacial meaning between two facial surfaces the tension that is created is going to attract more molecules so it is the resistance to separation of two parallel surfaces that is impaired by a film of liquid between them so if you consider an example of two glass slabs and some water in between them if you try to separate the two glass slabs they will you will feel some resistance so that resistance is known as interfacial surface tension it is dependent on the ability of the fluid to wet the rigid surrounding material so if this is your denture base and if this is your tissue then saliva acts for the interfacial surface tension this is the liquid that is acting for interfacial surface tension 
So all denture based materials have higher surface tension than the oral mucosa. So before they are wet, before they are inserted in the mouth, the denture bases have higher surface tension. But once coated by salivary pellicle, their surface tension reduces. So after they are coated by saliva, the surface tension is reduced, which promotes more retention by promoting maximizing, maximizing the surface area between liquid and base. So the surface area of adhesion is increased with the help of salivary pellicle and the surface tension is also reduced. That is why the denture becomes more retentive in presence of saliva. So this is about interfacial surface tension. So how does interfacial surface tension play such an important role? Role of surface tension is mainly through capillarity action or capillary attraction. That means suction of fluid in that area where low pressure is created or low surface tension is created. When the adaptation of denture base to mucosa is sufficiently close, the space filled with a thin film of saliva acts like a capillarity tube in that the liquid seeks to increase its contact with both denture and the mucosal surface. So when the denture is in close proximity, in good uh, contact, contact with the entire mucosa, that's when the saliva seeps in with capillarity action and that is how the retention is going to increase. So the role of uh, surface tension is through capillarity action, which is an important question. Okay, Surface tension acts by capillarity attraction or capillarity an application of this is that the surface tension plays a major role in retention of maxillary denture. In maxillary denture, this is your uh, tissue, this is the denture. So it goes through capillarity action from between the surface of denture and the mucosa. But in mandibular denture, there is excess saliva along the lower border of the mandibular denture and surface tension is lost in mandibular denture due to loss of liquid air interface at the border. So in mandibular denture, there is no surface tension concept. It is only applicable to in maxillary complete dentures. And coming to muscular factors like neutral zone, which was given by Dr. Fish. So neutral zone refers to a zone which is balanced between the forces of the buccal mucosa and the tongue. So consider your mandibular denture. If, you, if the patient has a large wide tongue macroglossia, the denture is going to lift off because of the forces of the tongue. Or if the patient has high muscle activity, continuously if the patient is doing such movements, then the denture is going to lift from the buccal side. So a neutral zone is that zone which is in balance between the buccal forces and the lingual forces of the tongue. So it refers to that space in the oral cavity where the forces exerted by the musculature of the tongue are balanced and equal with the forces ex exerted by the buccinator muscle. So the buccal and the lingual forces are balanced in this kind of a situation. Exerted by the buccinator muscle of the cheek laterally and orbicularis muscle anteriorly. So anteriorly, orbicularis muscle and buccally, buccinator. So the forces of these two muscles versus the, versus the force of the tongue. So this concept says that you have to arrange your teeth and make your uh, denture in such a way that both the musculature are balanced, the buccal musculature and the lingual musculature. And that zone is known as neutral zone. Then the third important objective of impression making is stability. Stability is nothing but rocking kind of a motion in the mouth. So anything apart from the path of placement, if it is not stable in the mouth, stable itself under, explains most of the words. So stable would be through lateral or horizontal forces. Retention would be along the path of insertion or path of placement. So what is stability? Stability is the quality of denture to be firm, steady or constant, to resist displacement by functional forces and not to be subjected at change of position when forces are applied. So the prosthesis should not move from its position when forces are applied. It should remain firm, steady and constant to these kind of forces which are going to functionally act on the denture. It is the ability of the denture to withstand horizontal forces. So stability is related to horizontal forces. Retention is related to vertical forces opposite to the path of placement. Okay. What are the factors affecting stability? Vertical height of the ridge. So resorbed ridge shows poor stability. If the vertical height of the ridge is good, then the stability will be better. Quality of soft tissue. Firm tissues will have better stability. Flabby tissues have, will have poor stability because they are going to rebound and move the denture away from its place. Then we have quality of impression. So if the impression, which is the final impression is accurate and smooth, then you will get stable complete dentures. If the final impression is not accurate, then stability will be compromised. Occlusal plane should be parallel to the ridge. 
If the occlusal plane is at a cant, then there will be lateral or horizontal forces acting on the denture and the denture will not be stable. Arrangement of teeth, balanced occlusion. Obviously, there should be simultaneous contact posteriorly and anteriorly in centric, eccentric movements. So, these are going to determine the balance. The balanced occlusion is going to determine the stability of the denture because if there are any interferences in movement of the jaw here and there, then the denture is going to move out from its place. And contour of the polished surface. So, if the contour of the polished uh, surface is not appropriate, if the surfaces are not polished, then they are going to also have horizontal forces acting from here and there and that is going to dislodge the denture. So, these are the different factors affecting stability of complete dentures. And the last two objectives of complete denture impressions are support and aesthetics. So, what is support? Support is the resistance to vertical forces of mastication, occlusal forces and other forces applied in a direction towards the denture bearing area. So, let us try to understand support. Support is towards the denture bearing area, retention is away from the denture bearing area and stability is horizontal forces. So, this is support, okay, towards the denture bearing area, towards the tissues. It is achieved by covering as much area as possible. So, the more area you cover, the more support you will get. This helps in distribution of forces by snowshoe effect. Snowshoe effect means larger the area of the denture, larger will be the force distribution and lesser will be the resorption. So, because you are spreading out the forces to a wider area, the detrimental forces, the detrimental effects of the forces are lesser on the tissues. That is known as snowshoe effect. Okay, wider coverage area is related to snowshoe effect. And the last objective of making impressions is aesthetics. Now, how is aesthetics related to impression making? So, thickness of the flange. If you have very thick flanges recorded in your impression, then you will have very bulky flanges in your denture. So, the aesthetics of your impression will also govern the aesthetics of your denture. Impression should produce, reproduce width and height of the sulcus. So, the impression should be exact replica of the height and width of the denture that you want. So, the sulcus has to be recorded in the same way that the denture has to be made. So, aesthetics is also an important part of complete denture impressions. Coming to a few very important points from exam point of view and things that you should remember. The average available denture base area for edentulous mandible is 14 cm square and for maxilla is 24 cm square. So, these values you have to remember. The atmospheric pressure which is called as the emergency retentive force or temporary restraining force is 14.7 pound per inch square. So, when it is effective in maxillary denture for peripheral seal. So, the atmospheric pressure is that kind of a pressure generated within the denture like a vacuum. When the patient tries to open the mouth wide or there is any movement that is going to uh, make the denture fall towards gravity, this force is going to act and place it back. So, this is like a vacuum force created. It is known as emergency retentive force or temporary restraining force. The value for that is 14.7 pound per inch square and it is applicable in areas with adequate peripheral seal. Retention is a mucosa bond phenomenon and support is a bone related phenomenon. So, understand the difference between retention and support. The most common reason to repeat an impression is improper positioning of the impression tray. So, the impression tray is a very important part of your making impression and the gap between the impression tray and the tissues is also very critical and the most common error reported is improper seating or positioning of the impression tray. Other reasons are improper consistency of the material, large voids, movement of the tray during setting and too brittle or too much impression material. So, all these factors are also going to govern the quality of your final impression or your primary impression. So, these are the points that you must remember for your exams. So, this brings us towards the end of the video on principles and objectives of impression making. As you must have realized, it is theoretically an important topic and frequently a lot of questions have been asked. Recently, question on emergency retentive forces was also seen in the exams. So, make sure you study the topic well, go through the video again if required and ensure that you are very thorough with the topic. So, few questions that you should focus basically on are the objectives of impression making the five objectives. Then you have to understand what is adhesion and cohesion. Adhesion is between unlike molecules, the physical attraction between unlike molecules is adhesion and like molecules is cohesion. Surface tension is associated with capillarity action in dentures. The emergency retentive force is also known as temporary restraining force, which is associated with the atmospheric pressure. The value is 14.7 pound per 
inch square so that is an important question support is associated with snowshoe effect larger the surface bearing area larger the uh, denser bearing area more will be the support and the denser bearing areas in maxilla are an average of 24 cm square and mandible is 14 cm square so i hope this video was useful to you thank you for watching this video